receive it. And somebody's going to remind me to go to my hotel room, so there's that. Um, should we get started? Do we, is, is it 9? It's 9.01. Um, hi. I'm plugging things is, in is hard for Lawrence here. Um, let, let's uh, be tricky and double click on that. Ah, you do it. Do, 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 do. Yes, just miss the errors. Um, never show that again. So just to be sure, we are doing the twisted training, and it was swapped with the with the other testing uh, training that was here, scheduled here. So if you are here for the testing training, you di you need to go upstairs in the Pizza Napoli room. All right. Um, all right. Welcome, welcome. Um, so this is an introductory uh, talk on. Uh, how to write code with Twisted. We're going to be covering how to write um, clients, servers, how to do flow control with deferreds, um, a few tricks and tips, uh, different ways of doing things. Um, if you've, if you, did, did anybody go to the talk last year, the same training session last year? That's fantastic. Great. Um, does this clicker work? Well, yes, but you have to. Yes, but you have to plug it in first. It, oh well. Electronics says that. Um, so, Twisted is an asynchronous I.O. framework, um, meaning uh, principally single-threaded, event-loop-driven uh, callbacks. Um, I th the, idea of th the idea of this training is you'll be able to um, comfortably uh, write some code, dive into the source, find out the, the right things to use, and hopefully ask the right questions. Apparently, even the space bar doesn't work anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, so my name's Stephen Thorne. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm an SRE with Google, and I've, uh, I've done quite a bit of networking in, in, my, uh, in my career. And this is... Uh, so I'm Lawrence, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I've been at Twisted Core Dev since 2009, uh, currently doing a startup that uses Twisted extensively. And my last startup was also one that used Twisted extensively and ended up being a good exit. So, um, yeah, it's been good to me. Um, somehow I've been a, a dev since sort of 2002, but uh, it's not the sort of thing. Uh, okay, so raise your hand if you've done network programming before at all. Right, event loop programming, use select, poll, all right, um, and in other languages, Java. Okay, great. Uh, now, um, we've got on the files EP website some, some files that would be useful for you. Um, I also have them on these, these USB keys if you want, um, if, you, if anybody needs them. Uh, files at EP should be quite quick. Um, pass those around if you want. No, no, not, I haven't loaded those yet. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, they're, they're, they're on these keys. Um, uh, so, um, that's a quick link to that, um, but it, it, you can actually just navigate to files.ep, go down the tutorial, and then the Twisted Training is the link. Uh, you'll want a later version of Twisted. In fact, I put 12.1 up there because that's uh, the, the current release. So the, the Twisted versions, they go on here. So that's 2012, uh, the second release of 2012. Um, the I didn't put the API docs on there. That was silly of me. They're on the net. Want me to go down one of them? Uh, yeah, if you could. No. Yeah, do that. Uh, so, so there's um, there's some example files there which will be be useful because it, it will save you a bit of typing during it during the uh, presentation. Ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, it'll do that. Uh, if you have Twisted installed, we, you basically want to get to about that point. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 
And if you have a Mac and you need uh, GCC tools, they're on the USB keys as well, as well as a real version of Python. Is that the best way of getting them? Is that the best way? Really? It's nasty. Um, please feel free to ask questions at any time, especially if I'm being unclear, or just any time. Yeah, sorry. You don't have to type the whole thing, you can just get a file to DP. That short link should work, provided the internet does it. If the internet's not working, it's all on the USB keys. The, the Mac port version is, yeah, the, the one that's installed on Snow Leopard is version 11. It's kind of all right. Um, it's just a b bit painful if you want to install extra tools. Um, yep. Most annoyingly, uh, virtual env doesn't work for it. Um, no, 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 no don't, don't fuss too much. But it, 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 version 11 should work. Yep. Yeah. Uh. Right. Right. I think we'll just continue on. That's very strange. What if what? If, It turns out that when you step on the cable, it unplugs. Yeah. All right. Um, hmm? No, it's fine. So, uh, uh, I'm just going to go through some introductory network uh, concepts. I mean, it, it, it's it's quite self-explanatory what a network program is, sending, sending a stream between two sites, uh, server, client. Uh, we're going to be starting off writing clients, um, move on to servers, um, and of course servers end up being clients. Uh, basic TCP IP, server listens on a port, the client connects to that port. Um, with with uh, uh, Twisted, fortunately, now finally has rudimentary IPv6 support. Um, so, but I haven't really investigated that lately. Uh, but, you know, this is, once you establish a stream, they're all the same. <clears throat> Reading and writing data uh, in, a, in, a, in a blocking, non-async world uh, system where you have uh, one thread or one process per connection, um, you can simply just uh, call write and that will return when it's finished writing. You call read, it will return when it, when it has received some data. Um, the, the idea of uh, 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 see, I didn't write these slides originally, so it, so I don't know what's coming sometimes. Um, so in a in a um, a single-threaded situation where you have no concurrency whatsoever, you end up in a situation where when multiple clients connect, um, at the, simultaneously you end up with 
a second client getting rejected or in a queue or uh, depending on your, your queue length, uh, um, the, they'll get timeouts and whatnot. And it's just, you know, not positive. Uh, so there are diff different paradigms of doing things. Um, you you want to be able to have multiple clients connect and there are various different techniques. Forking a new process, having worker threads, and asynchronous I.O. Now Twisted is asynchronous I.O. Um, I'm sure many of you have done various different way ways of doing this. So, I mean, if, you've, if you ever run a web server, um, they, they often use a combination of, of, of techniques. Uh, Apache uses multi-process. Um, and can use multi-thread and all sorts of things. Um, I think this is a description from the website. <coughs> um, I mean, you can read that. Um, so the, the, the idea is, okay, so this is from the API docs. This is some of the technologies which are available. These are the sub-packages of twisted dot. Um, so just looking down this list, uh, Twisted has implementations for uh, SSH v2 and Telnet. That's uh, conch, you know, ah. Um, authentication, databases, please ignore the documentation generation system. Um, the Sphinx is much, much better. Um, mail, uh, manhole is actually very interesting. It allows you to connect into a running process and get a Python prompt. Um, and you can interact with the running process. Um, I won't be demonstrating it here, but if, if you are running Twisted and you want to be able to uh, debug what the heck is going on, uh, well, traditionally, I would always open up a Python prompt and start typing at it. Um, you know, if it's a, a, a local program, I just import my modules. It's very hard to do that when you've got a running event loop. Manhole allows you to do that. You actually, just tell net, the telnet in or SSH in and, and find out. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a this is actually a bit of a dated graph, but it shows the the components are twisted. Does this have a laser on it? Uh, yes, uh, middle button somewhere. There's a middle button. And oh no, it's supposed to. All I wanted was freaking sharks with freaking laser beams. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, all the way on the left, uh, twisted application. That's that's what's uh, what the box is labeled. Um, the reactor is our event loop um, that can do GUI integration. So you can run a twisted program with an event loop, and that can uh, interact with a u user interface event loop. Um, that's there. so if you you can run GDK applications and it and it cooperates correctly with the GDK main loop, uh, the Windows main loop. The uh, well, WX, which doesn't really have a main loop, but it still tries to integrate with it. Um, pretty much anything. Uh, uh, Pi Objective C. There's a way of uh, if you're writing Mac OS X applications, you can have it neatly cooperate with all of uh, OS X's native event loop stuff. So pretty much any anything that you can imagine. TK too, if you're into that. Um, anything you can imagine, you can write an event loop, and you can have it cooperate nicely with Twisted. All right. Um, over there we. Uh, just below that, we have um, Twisty. There, um, that's the if you if you uh, are, are writing a application and you want to sort of set it up as a daemon on your system, uh, where, where you know in etc. in it d blah blah blah. Um, Twisty is the the best way to do entry point to that because it gives you all the things you need for daemonization, um, system logging, all of that. That that setup process is is encapsulated within Twisty command line arguments. Trial is our unit testing framework. Uh, I said ignore law, really do. Um, uh, up here we have twisted, in, right at the top we have twisted internet. Oh, I do have a laser. Uh, so that's, that supports TCP, UDP, SSL. Um, SSL is very important. Um, security is very important. You need to be able to support it. Um, it's actually quite, e quite easy, um, provided you have your certificate set up. Uh, protocols. Um, so this is all the high level protocols. Uh, there's a lot that are pre-implemented or, or, or whatnot. Um, DNS. Um, uh, SSH, SMTP, HTTP, POP3, um, and some more esoteric ones. So if you run a postfix server, for instance, you can um, have a postfix lookup daemon 
um, which it, which just ends up being you know some class one thing override a method and then suddenly you can interact uh, with uh, did I say Postgres? Yes. I meant Postfix. I, I was going server. to say I was going to try and correct you, but yeah. Um, but there's Postgres, there's native Postgres uh, uh, implementation in there too, but I don't think it's in Twisted Protocols yet. There's a ticket for it. Is but, it? Yeah. Oh, because that, that's in a TX module. TX Postgres, so yeah. on Launchpad, if you go to launchpad.net slash TX, there's a, um, you know, it's very cumbersome to have everything embedded within the one package, uh, within the Twisted package. So we have the, um, the TX project, which is uh, third-party code that people have just written and put on Launchpad. Um, a lot of the Twisted developers use BZR. Um, and, and therefore end up on Launchpad, but not all do. Um, there's a whole lot on GitHub. Um, yeah, you, you use a lot of GitHub. Um, uh, and MISC stuff. So, for instance, everybody wants to interact with databases. There's really good support for that. Um, when you're running an event loop program, it's very hard to um, interact with databases because databases are blocking interfaces. So. Um, that's a, a nice, neat little way of encapsulating the uh, the thread pool behavior required in order to um, talk to you know SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, um, in a non-blocking manner. Um, so we're primarily a networking framework, uh, but general-purpose software you need you need to have those those capabilities. Um, oh now what is this? This is Twisted Internet. Um, this is the support for sources and destinations of events. Uh, this is the, l the list of packages within the Twisted Internet, pa sorry, modules within the Twisted Internet package. And, and we, we discussed earlier um, the different main loops, so this is where they are. CF Reactor there is, um, sorry, Reactor is the name of the main loop. Um, that, yeah, that's more or less all it is. CF Reactor is, uh, what do they call that? Core Foundation, that's the yeah, Mac one. Yeah, it's basically OS X. Yeah. yeah uh, Endpoints, you'll be seeing a lot of examples of endpoints. That's just a, a, a neat way of saying this is the, the abstracting away um, something which represents uh, a server port and the, and the protocol it attaches to. So you can create one protocol and attach that to your SSL listener, your TCP listener, your Unix socket listener. Uh, Glib, GDK, iNotify, uh, standard IO is very important. Uh, Win32 event reactor, what were you pointing to? Uh, no, uh, Win32 Win and WX, the ones that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So, um, so it really does actually work on Windows 32. Um, and is it here? Is IOCP here on this list? Because uh, you be. don't actually want to use Win32 Event Reactor. It turns out that, uh, that IOCP is a, is a much better way of doing things. That's also supported. IOCP is an um, edge-driven uh, uh, IOCP is kind of like EPAL, but... But is, is the EPAL equivalent or the KQ equivalent for Windows? Uh, it's a lot uglier, but uh, it's the only thing to do really fast I on Windows. The, if you ever use select on Windows with Python, you find you have a 64 file descriptor limit on your select. That's a little low. We like it in the thousands, um, and so therefore, IOCP is a better solution. Now, I don't know why it's not on that list. Okay, so this is a short list of things which are useful. Uh, <clears throat> task. Task is where you'll find, you know, I want to call a function every five minutes. Defer, this doesn't actually belong in here because uh, it, it is pure Python. It doesn't rely on the main loop. Uh, the reactor is the place you import the, the main loop from. Uh, that abstracts to the correct one that you're using on your system. Uh, protocol is the basics that you need in order to um, set up a client or a server protocol. Um, this is where all the exceptions are. And endpoints, of course, is, uh, is where you um, do a listener or, or a connector. So, so this is a little representation. You know, if you're doing multi-threaded, you do something like this. Uh, and each of, each of the connections that's been accepted will be waiting at different times. Uh, so Twister does it all in one loop and multiplexes. Uh, the reactor calls callbacks. Now, I, sh I should stress that. Have you, has anybody heard of a deferred before? There's one in the uh, quite a few in the room. Okay, so uh, the deferred is the the abstraction we use for organizing callbacks. Um, that's callbacks for uh, 
questions that you've asked, and there are promise of, of a result to come. Now, that's not the same callback as what we're talking in the context of the reactor. The, co the callbacks we're talking about in the context of the reactor are things like a connection has been made, you've received more data, uh, you've just lost the connection, um, somebody's closed their terminal, uh, the whole thing's shutting down. <clears throat> Now, the difference is that a, a, deferred is a, a deferred is only called once, whereas these kind of callback functions get called over and over and over. Um, <coughs> so a good example of a, a deferred would be, for example, let's say you want to download a web page. Mm -hmm. um, then you call page, and that gives you a deferred. And whenever the web page is completely downloaded, the deferred fires with the body of the web page that you asked for. If you try to fire it twice, it raises an exception, as it should. Um, so. This is the most basic Twisted program. Go, type, run, uh, import uh, from twisted.internet, import reactor, which is something you will see on a lot of slides, uh, most Twisted programs. So does everyone have a working Twisted uh, now? Can they open a REPL, import Twisted, and not get an exception? <laughs> it helps. And preferably get a recent version. If anyone has any problems with that, uh, I'll be more than happy to come and help. But. So this is starting a main loop, and this will run forever. Um, you'll have to control C out of it. Now, um, the reactor only runs and stops once. Um, so so there, are, there are three methods which are very important, reactor.run, reactor.stop, and um, the one that you should never use, which is reactor.crash. Um, the difference between stop and crash is that stop will shut down all your TCP connections uh, and tear everything down and prepare for system exit. Crash won't. Crash will leave them there. Uh, so if you're doing really hacky stuff, you won't crash, which you never do. Uh, <clears throat> so this is not the slide that I thought would appear. <laughs> so I thought I, I'd gone through and edited this so that it, it would use endpoints. Maybe the next slide shows an endpoint. Nope. What happens? That, I don't know what's happening there. All right. So. Uh, Okay, so this method, uh, listen TCP, uh, okay, laser side. Um, listen TCP is uh, the simplest way, absolute simplest way of signing to listen on a port. This uh, uh, listens on, listens on uh, the blank interface, meaning all interfaces, port 8000, and some question marks. So those question marks are what we call the factory. Um, please, go ahead, type this out. Um, either do it in a text file is probably easiest because you'll be editing similar files. <coughs> um, you'll have to import protocol. Um, if you want to save typing, you can actually just type factory. Uh, the difference between a server factory and a client factory is semantic. Um, Generally, you, it's a, you look at the inheritance hierarchy to have a look at what something's supposed to do, but it's, it's actually exactly the same um, interface. Uh, currently with uh, endpoints, the, uh, there, there used to be a slightly larger difference, but currently with endpoints, it's been completely done away with. Um, so yeah, you can pretty much uh, do either yeah. one. And um, this is a bit hackish. Basically, uh, you, you set what protocol it is, but you know, this is, this is uh, a well-accepted pattern and, and, and fine. Uh, you're setting the protocol to be protocol.protocol. .protocol. That's the superclass of all protocols. Um, and that just doesn't implement anything. So it doesn't implement its events for uh, connection made, data received, connection lost, or, or do anything. If you run that, um, you'll end up with a server that listens on port 8000, accepts data, and then throws it away. It will never send you anything. Um, it won't call you in the morning. Uh, it, <laughs> sorry, <coughs> that was rude. Uh, uh, it, it, it's it's some, simply a um, a listener. Now this will list on the default installation of Twisted uh, for 12.1 on a on a Mac system on a Linux system. This can handle a couple of thousand uh, connections. W fine. So this is an event loop, um, and it can handle uh, a high thro throughput of nothing. 
And starting with the next version, it will handle like tens of thousands of connections just Yay. by abs doing absolutely nothing. Uh, the difference is that right now, uh, the default for most of you, I think, will be Select Reactor. No, no, uh, no. 12.1. Uh, oh, no, so actually 12.1 is the first release where it will magically figure out like, oh, look, I'm running on FreePSD, so I probably want KQ, or I'm looking on Linux. Uh, I'm running on Linux, so I probably want uh, uh, EPAL, or I'm running on Windows, et cetera, et cetera. So Select has a hard limit of uh, 1,024 files descriptors. Um, which is actually just a, a hash define in, in, a, source, in a Python source file. Um, but uh, EPOL, POL, KQ, IOCP, they're better reactors, and they, they will now be the defaults in 12.1 and onwards. Uh, in, in the past, you would have to do some fancy imports in order to get them working properly. Uh, select being the one that works everywhere. Or it works on Windows, it works on Linux. Um, so what's actually happening here? The reactor is listening on the port for each connection, so the, 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 the event loop knows what factory is associated with what file descriptor that it's listening on. It's accepting connections. It, every time a connection comes in, it asks that factory, an event that's sent to the factory, is, is sent, you've got an incoming connection, can you give me a protocol, please? So there's one factory, and you can actually have the factory on multiple ports, because you know the reactor knows that one factory is on multiple ports, it'll just work. Um, the and then one protocol object is created per connection. So that's why on this slide, we're not passing an, ah. Uh, so we're not passing an instance of protocol, we're passing the class itself. So that's the protocol factory. Uh, you can actually ma make that a function which returns a protocol if you want, it can be anything. There's also a method you can override called build protocol if you want to actually do, run some code within the context of the factory. Um, you might see a demo of that later. So. Build protocol is passed the address. The factory has the opportunity at this point to reject the connection by not returning a protocol. You know, that's, that's quite useful, um, depending on the kind of application you're running. So, so it, you can say, you, you can do sort of your firewalling in your, in your actual application and choose to reject the connection. Um, now, Twisted has these things called interfaces. It uses zope.interface. Has anyone used zope.interface? Yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> uh, so if you actually look at twisted.internet.interfaces, uh, there's, a, there's a number of interfaces there. Uh, do you want to say a few words about that? Yeah, so basically uh, an interface essentially is, um, it looks like a class definition. It has no implementation. Its only function is to document what a certain thing in your project is or what it does or what it's used for. So for example, an iProtocol factory isn't a protocol factory, but it explains if you ever uh, come across a thing that's called a protocol factory, here's what it is, here's what it does, here's what you can do with it. So these are purely documentation uh, and, and sort of a statement of intent. Um, it is a little confusing, but it does allow you to do things without inheritance hierarchies. And Twisted is very subclass oriented, so not composition, but, uh, but inheritance instead. So having these, uh, these interfaces allows you to clearly document exactly what you mean and exactly what uh, methods you, you should be able to override. If it's listed in the interface, you can override it. Um, we are going to now write a server, you're going to write a server first, that, um, that returns all data it receives uppercased. Um, this is this is one of the most trivial uh, when you when you write it when you start learning how to write code with um, networking. Uh, it's just after the echo server, um, uh, echo server being the one that writes back data back to you. Now a protocol has three methods. I mentioned them earlier: connection made, connection lost, data received. Uh, the most important thing here is I before E except after C. The number of times I've made that mistake: data received. Uh, uh, you can find this um, in the bundle of code that's on the website uh, called EuroPython 2012 or on that USB key. Uh, it's called upperserver.py, or you can type it out. Um, I recommend you type it out because I always find you, you learn better when you type. Uh, run it. Go now. Um, and then tell that into it. You'll notice that this example, um, contrary to the earlier one where we used listen TCP, will actually use a real endpoint. Um, from right here, it's not exactly evident why endpoints are fantastic. The real reason is that you can write your code exactly once, and then if you want to make it work on SSL, that involves zero lines of code. Or if to you want to work on anything, it involves zero lines of code. To make this work on SSL instead of TCP, you change TCP to SSL. 
in that string. And the idea is that you can on a command line argument say, listen on a Unix socket, which is, by the way, you type Unix colon slash uh, path to Unix socket. Um, and, you, and later you'll see examples of clients where you create one endpoint and use that endpoint multiple times to connect multiple times. So uh, reactor, protocol, and endpoints. Um, protocol is the, is the uh, superclass of, sorry, the, the place that all protocols come from. Uh, later we'll be using uh, a few helper protocols. They're, they're, they're from a different location. I'll point that out at the time. Uh, you don't have to implement connection made and connection lost or data received. Um, but those those are the three callbacks which the which you will receive when you do this. Um, then you quickly throw together a factory, listen, and then the last thing you ha you have to have in your program is reactor.run, which actually runs the event loop. Um, the program won't exit from reactor.run until you hit control C. If you have any questions, uh, flag Lauren's down. I'm not moving. So you'll notice that uh, connection lost is sort of doesn't really do anything. You don't really have to implement it. It's just here, so you know that that method exists. Um, if you wanted to look that up in the documentation, it would be on iProtocol, um, following the explanation about interfaces I gave earlier. Um, reason, sometimes uh, y you might print that out. And sometimes it will say, uh, no, actually, often it will say, error, the connection was closed cleanly. Um, that's actually perfectly all right. Uh, it, it's always called. It's always called with a reason, um, and and the most common reason is that the connection was closed cleanly. You'll also see uh, connection lost, and, and that, uh, in terms of uh, uh, connection closed by PR uh, and those kind of errors, basic network errors. Uh, a reason. What's a, what's a reason an instance of? It's an uh, instance of failure, isn't it? Yes. So it's got an exception object in it. Yes. In twisted dot errors. Uh, twisted internet dot errors is a list of the exceptions you can see. Who's got that running? No, you're still typing? You got a few people got it running, excellent. You copied it from the table, didn't you? No, no, excellent, cool. Um, so you got the the data coming back up a case? I did when I fixed my typo. Ah, yes. Um, yes, so the question was how do we change the host that listens on? Um, uh, colon interface equals localhost, I think. Um, interface meaning is, is yeah, um, that's a terminology from, yeah, but unfortunately it's uh, the, the IP address, not the actual Ethernet interface. But, you know, there's no way to do that sanely. Um, it, when you do a connection, you actually do TCP colon the host name colon the port. So it's a bit different for, for clients, but you call a different method for that. That's uh, client from string instead of server from string. Um, if, you, if you're doing SSL, uh, you also do the uh, SSL keys um, by doing SSL colon port name colon uh, key equals. Sorry, question? Sure. Uh, write some data. Write it some do data it? into it with uh, anything. Well, no, you, it should it should send it on connection. Can you go have a look at this program? Well, only if he makes a connect. How is he making a connection? He, he's, he's doing it. Right. Go talk to him. So at this point, you should be able to find everybody else's laptop by connecting to their la to random IPs on port eight thousand. And th this this will uh, support multiple connections, of course, as well. So um, so there's there's nothing here which is uh, stopping the event loop from running. Um, self transport write that that is not a blocking operation. What that does is it inserts the data into a queue. I, I, if you did something ill advised, you could write a 20 gigabyte file into there, uh, and it would um, uh, portion that up. You select to find out when the socket is writable. Write the data. Fill up the kernel buffer. Wait till the kernel buffer is a little bit drained. Write more data to it. So, so that's non-blocking. Um, 
loose connection there, of course, is optional. You can just make it continue to uh, send data. Um, how do you go? Uh, perfect. It was connection mode instead of connection made. Ah, yes. Sorry, connection made. That's another typo. Um, uh, now, now this is one one reason why um, there's, there's a feature in Java actually um, uh, when you use juice and and that sort of thing where you can say at overrides, mm -hmm. um, which will raise an exception if you're not actually overriding a method. I actually really like that. There was a talk at EuroPython this year about. Um, Copying things like add override from Java. Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, add override is the one thing I want. Final, but add override. I want that so so that you get an exception when you accidentally do connection received. Um, this is the slightly simpler example. Um, this is the older style with listen TCP. Um, so, ah, so you know that's that's just a. You'll see this in, other, in older code and older, older examples. I much, much prefer endpoints, and I use them consistently everywhere. Um, and all the examples use endpoints. But just, just to say, that's, that's the older style. Um, this, is an, this is an example of it running. This is what you should see. Um, telnet, I, I strongly advise you to use Telnet. Um, here is a client. It's called multiclient.py. If you actually run this, this will uh, use your arguments to go. You do uh, send your arguments localhost colon 8000, and then a whole bunch of command line arguments. It will actually make multiple connections. So this is actually a demonstration of a client which connects multiple times. Um, uh, so if you run multi-client, you should see output like that. Um, I don't recommend you write out multi-client, because that's nasty code. Um, Interestingly, um, I, I, in I inherited some of this code, and very, very common bug is to use send. Never use send. Always use send all. Uh, questions coming up. Uh, questions? Any questions? Uh, yes, so, so autocode reloading? Um, no, I don't have a good, a good, good way of doing autocode reloading. Um, so, so the question was, uh, is there a way to, to have autocode reloading um, uh, so, so to, to, to ease quick development? Um, no, there, there isn't anything built in. Um, I, I did, however, um, experiment with this a while back. On my, on my Bitbucket page, I've got a little thing called Harpoon, which is a thing I wrote in order to make it easier to, uh, to qu quickly restart a server with a new protocol instance. It's just a command line argument, a command line thing where you um, pass it a protocol and a, and a string endpoint, and it automatically synthesizes a server so you can test. Uh, there's also a uh, um, Python project called Watchdog, uh, which is on uh, Google Code somewhere, and it, it's essentially a generic uh, iNotify wrapper um, that works on pretty much any platform, and I use it. It comes with a tool called Watch Me Do, and I use that to restart my server when I'm doing development. Oh, and it works fine. Any other questions? Great. So now we're going to build on that original uh, server that you wrote, the, the upper server. Um, try and do these things. Uh, count the number of connected clients uh, and announce the number of connected clients when you, at the point where you connect. Um, uh, go for it now. Uh, all protocols have their factory as an attribute. So, so uh, self.transport and self.factory are two very important things to, to, to have. So transport's the, the stream you connected to, and factory's the, the, the factory that created you. Uh, go ahead. Do this now. And the important thing to remember is that a protocol is one single connection, and a factory is sort of the father of all of those connections. So if you have something that's, that's shared amongst all, connect, amongst all of your connections, you do it on a factory. If it's specific to one connection, you do it on the protocol. When we move on to doing uh, clients later, you'll see there's, a, there's quite tight coupling there. Any questions about this exercise?
Uh, in a glass would be nice. Hmm. Show of hands, who's got it running? Oh, okay. Um, you don't actually have to call super, super on protocol if you want to uh, give it an init. Yeah, I, I was mm -hmm. uh, I think there are also old style classes, so super doesn't work very well. Mm. So the, the, the reason there's a lot of old style classes in Twisted is because uh, it originally worked on Python 1.5 and 1.4, um, and changing semantics is bad. I'm not sure which of these are empty. Uh,
little traps I forgot about. Old star class that people saw class use, use in it called Super. Which is not really work on protocol. No. On a related note to uh, Twisted works on, or used to work at least on 1.4 and 1.5, uh, one of the most frequently asked questions is, when will it work on Python 3? Um, and to answer that, we actually have a Google Summer of Code student currently doing amazing work on getting it to work. Uh, uh, Antoine Pitrou, which is one of the CPython core devs, is also working on it. Um, they are both making great strides, but, um, well, as Steven said, it used to work on 1.4. It's that old. Um, so it's not exactly easy to port all that code. So work in progress, but much like Django, we're not quite there yet. Some stuff works. Um, the, the fortunate thing is that Twisted has extremely extensive unit tests, so we do know what doesn't. Okay, so I'm going to, um, th this, is, this is a way of doing that, that, uh, that exercise. So that, um, here in this particular case, we're actually subclassing factory just so that we have the attributes set there that we need. Otherwise, it's a bit ugly. Um, I, I did see some people using this technique. It works fine. Uh, accessing the factory, increase the counter. On the connection loss, decrease the counter. Um, and pass the instance of counting factory through. Um, anyone having trouble with that? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so multi client's not so good for this. So, uh, so use a telnet or something. Um, uh, threaded client is is an interesting one. Uh, if you, if to, as a test program, uh, threaded client does all the connections simultaneously with threads. Oh, sorry. It's not clear to me why do you have to um, hook the count on the factory? And uh, Because there is only one protocol per connection. So if you want to have access to data that the other protocols have access to, you have to do it on the factory, not on the connection. Um, so, so if you think about the, the factory is attached to the listening port and the, the, the protocol is only attached to each individual connection. So they are, okay. they're all isolated, they all have their own attributes. Uh, so, uh, so, so, the pro so say you were writing a protocol, you would do something like uh, is user authenticated would be a, um, a, a method on, or an attribute on the protocol and um, is the server actually running or, uh, or number of connections or that kind of thing down the factory. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to move on from here. Any other questions? Great, great. Um, Perhaps to pick into that, uh, technically, if you did it as a class attribute on the protocol, for this example, it would work. It would just be semantically incorrect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or a global value. Um, but, you know, globals are bad, I guess. 
uh, it's, it's always better to hook things off. Uh, so recapping, uh, the reactor runs until told to close all stop sockets and stop. Um, so if you call reactor.stop, by the way, um, you actually, so say for instance you, um, you actually want to send a, send a signal to shut down, uh, or after a certain number of seconds shut down, you call reactor.stop, reactor.run, reactor.stop. Uh, the reactor uses factory to act on the connections, factories create a protocol instance for each client, and you subclass and implement. Um, so, so the callbacks, the, the callbacks that are called multiple times in general in Twisted are, are not passed around as, as arguments to functions. They are, uh, they are class, um, sub, subclass and overrided, uh, uh, inherited methods. Uh, where, whereas um, callbacks for individual actions are generally passed around as attributes. We'll, we'll see a number of examples uh, in a few slides with for more complex, uh, for like standard behaviors, things like uh, if you want to receive net strings, you also do that by just subclassing a different uh, protocol and um, implementing its specific methods. Um, two, two more tips. Um, these, these are just tips. Um, Telnet is generally better than Netcat or NC. Uh, Telnet mu is much more aggressively flushes. If you're testing stuff, um, I, I recommend Telnet because it flushes more aggressively and it sends carriage return new line. Um, most network protocols, um, HTTP, POP3, FTP, um, standardized on carriage return new line, not new line. Um, and so, so you might actually find that if you're trying to test, you find your code doesn't work when you use Netcat, but it does with Telnet, that's why. Also, um, this, this is really neat. Um, I actually, Lawrence, I introduced Lawrence to this yesterday, but, I, it, but it's really neat. Uh, if you run this command, that runs the, the main loop and an interactive prompt simultaneously. So you can actually, uh, uh, run that, you get an interactive prompt. It's not really the Python interactive prompt, it's a re-implementation of it, but it understands deferred and it's got the main loop running, so you can import whatever code and, and bang away at it if you want to do things interactively. Yes? Hmm? Uh, not really. This, the, the issue is that in order to, to run the main loop and uh, and interact uh, at a high level with and give you good results. Um, it, you, you, we can't even use libreadline. We're not using libreadline for this. It's actually re-implementation. So some things like uh, I think control R might work, but a few of the other more esoteric libreadline features that, you might, that your fingers might be used to don't work. So for IPython, uh, apparently someone had that working in the past, back when they had uh, twisted -y things as their um, core in a deep dark recess of IPython, and then they started doing a rewrite, which I'm not sure if, if it's completed already or not, but based on that new base, which doesn't really use Twisted at all and has no way of, co of cooperating with other um, reactors, they broke through uh, two things. One is um, you can't use it with a, uh, with a GUI anymore, and two, well, except their own, and two, it doesn't work with Twisted anymore. So, yeah. sorry. Uh, someone did get it working with bPython. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is a proxy server. So a H, well, a, a rudimentary HTTP proxy server. So um, the client just sends a URL. Um, use Telnet. Um, the server returns the contents of the URL and closes the connection. So it's like the upper server, except we're actually going and doing a connection. Ah. Um, now, if you wanted to do new lines. This is how you would have to do it. You have to have a buffer. You have to, when you call, get data received, you append to that buffer, and then you check if the um, uh, if there is a new line, and then you this actually has a bug in it as well. Um, and then you you split off from that new line, and then you that's another bug there. Check that out because it's slash n. It checks the slash r slash n. So blah 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 blah. And then uh, we'll print each line. Um, this is much easier. Twisted.protocols is a collection of Twisted protocols. These are just implementations, not actual servers. So like say, say, for instance, you see SMTP in here. That's the implementation of the SMT protocol with callbacks that you can subclass, not an actual web email server. It, basic protocols. In basic is line receiver. I before E except after C. Uh, that instead of having data received, this implements data received. 
and then has a new method that you can subclass called line received. Does all the buffering for you, works really well. Um, you can customize the delimiter. Um, it works, works quite well. So that's what we're going to use for this example. And for most of the line-based examples from now on, I recommend you use line receiver, not protocol. Uh, protocols contains AMP, basic dict, finger, FTP, GPS. That's actually talking to GPS devices. Um, ident, uh, loopback is good for testing. Memcache, mice, that's actually an implementation for a serial mouse protocol. Uh, port forward, postfix, I mentioned postfix earlier, shakar, sip. Um, there is a, a sip server written, written with twisted socks. Safe will tell that TLS and wire. TLS meaning um, being able to upgrade a, uh, a normal connection to an SSL connection midstream. That was a question. Nope. No question. All right. Uh, protocols are basic contains these things. Uh, net string, line only receiver. Sorry, line receiver actually has the ability to go between line based and stream based. So line only is slightly more efficient, but it's easier to type line receiver. I'm um, sorry. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, if you want to send and receive integers, then there are these uh, integer receivers. Uh, there are uh, sorry. I think these are length prefixed strings, so you know they're much more efficient for in terms of buffering and whatnot, um, and file sender. Like if you want to be able to connect and send a file, that's a protocol that does it. It's all in basic, and you can you can leverage these things in your own programs. Uh, yeah, so check twisted protocols before you invent your own protocol. Um, having said that, uh, yep. So this is a line receiver. So. Um, this this code is in that bundle of uh, code that I had there. It's called proxy1.py. Um, run it. Run it if you want. Uh, run it and connect to port 8000 and give it a URL. Go, for, go now. Do it. Uh, you can even use uh, multi-client to send it multiple URLs. Um, so, so this has some rudimentary checking. Only does HTTP. Uh, does a bit of timing, uses URL lib to fetch the URL, closes connection. Um, doesn't implement connection made, connection lost, but doesn't need to. Uh, important thing, don't implement data received and line received, trying to be tricky, because you'll, you'll be overriding that the line receiver is data received and break line received. I've done that. If there's no working, uh, if there's no working internet connection, teach them about twisty. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so th uh, because this is a timing client, you'll find ex out exactly how slow the internet is here. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you want uh, local stuff, which is easier, um, files.ep is a is a is on the intranet, so it should be milliseconds, not seconds. Um, this is uh, a client which does some timing as well. Uh, who cares? It's like like the other clients. It's threaded like the previous client. It's not something that you really want to write yourself. It's something that's just on the stick if you want to run it. Um, here's an example of of these things. So uh, um, So this this is running timing client on on a machine, clearly not on the network, but um, somewhere in Europe, of course, because it is multiple seconds. Uh, and so this is the output from the client and the server, and you can see that the server took like one second each for these things, but three seconds in total for the client, um, just because there were so many things to retrieve. Now. Those sums are very, very close for the individual requests and the threaded client. The reason for this is because we're using urllib.urlopen, uh, which is not in, not cooperative with the async event loop. We're blocking the event loop, which means that nothing else can be processed. So no two web pages being downloaded at the same time. It's generally quite negative. Um, I, I don't know what happens there. I th think there's... Uh, yeah, so uh, we can't use urllib 2urlopen um, So let's, uh, we've, we've got to be cooperative. 
and we and when accessing the network, we have to return control to the event loop. So we can't just you know, in one method, go and do everything. Um, uh, you've got to return control while you're waiting on the network. Uh, so recap. Ah, yes, this is the Panini example. Uh, translating a uh, so the the idea is, I didn't know that we had these animations. Did you know about these animations? Yes. Ugh. So so the idea is that you can actually cook multiple things at the same time. Um, it's it's better to uh, not wait for the result for every connection at the time. This is a bad example because we end up saying, wait till my turn, wait till the order is ready, um, idling the CPU. So we'll use callbacks. You've seen callbacks before. Who's used? jQuery. That's jQuery? Who's used jQuery? You've used callbacks in jQuery all the time, hey? Um, that, that's a callback. Um, and this is the, you know, this is a better API. It's like, when ready, call that method. Um, deferreds add to the whole callback paradigm. Error handling, passing the result around, cancelling, all of that. So that's what deferred is. Um, deferred is so that you can um, ver very easily say, I want a result and I want to be able to handle the success but also handle the failure and you want to be able to chain these things together in a way that you can sort of say, do multiple things and just tell me when it's done. Uh, people who do uh, JavaScript uh, development sometimes probably know that these days actually a lot of things have implemented their own, including jQuery. jQuery now comes with its own deferred implementation. D the deferred implementation is more like an event yeah, it's, source, it's, um, so, so it can be called multiple times, can't it? Uh, no, it can't be called multiple times, but you can do chaining. Oh, so you, you can't get, chain uh, them together. So all, right. all the callbacks get called with the same uh, value. So Twisted's deferreds are a little bit more powerful than uh, jQuery's, but uh, the essential idea is still the same. You give it, you get an object right now that represents a promise that something will happen in the future. So, uh, has anybody used Mocky Kit? Uh, it's a JavaScript thingy. It's, it's got a very good deferred implementation, but it gets the, the order of arguments the wrong way around, which has been annoying. Um, so, it's a promise to result. A result will appear in the future. You can pass the that promise around. So, it's not, you know, uh, you, you add a callback to be called. You can actually return it without any callbacks attached and let your calling code attach the callbacks. Um, you can attach more callbacks to to you. It is technically not standalone. It's in the Twisted Internet package because it, it depends on a tiny, tiny thing in Twisted Internet to do with the reactor. But uh, in general, it's actually pure Python. Um, you, I've, until the break. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, so the idea is in the Panini example, you order the Panini, you get back a deferred immediately. So this is the promise of the result, and you and you can attach. A method to uh, to be called, and you can add callbacks and what we call errbacks, which is uh, what 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 to do in case of an error. Um, they're everywhere in Twisted, uh, mostly uh, so that you can uh, ask questions and get answers. Um, uh, yeah, so we we've got a Twisted variant of URLib. We call it Twisted Web Client. Um, actually, if you use that. Python minus m twisted dot .io. That's actually a really neat way of doing that. Uh, I recommend doing that now. Type Python minus m. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Oh, not ejected properly, Lawrence. All right. Uh, twisted dot conch dot. Hmm. Will that work? Yeah, except it breaks item two. Uh, all right. Really? So I show you terminal. The twisted dot web dot client import get page get page HTTP um. Oh, Bing not found. Apparently I'm not on the internet. Uh let me just quickly start a web server. No, uh I uh, uh, N. That's because I pulled your. Oh right. Um. Uh. You don't have any network connection. Right? 
That's all right. I'm running a web server. All right. Um, look. And so if you do this, um, you actually see you get a deferred instance, d equals underscore. So that's your deferred, and I can def um, foo page print page d dot add callback foo, and it prints it. Um, so so that's that's actually a really good example of using. Um, this to, to quickly prototype things and check out how APIs work. Um, you'll see that w when you um, w when I actually called this method, it found a def created a deferred, and uh, because it knew it had a deferred on the previous line, it it noticed before I finished typing that it had been called back, and so I actually showed the result immediately. It's really neat like that, um, and this is an example of creating a callback, adding the callback. And it just prints it that, right? And that's the return value of do add callback. So you can do, uh, do I, <laughs> if I do that again, this will print none because the previous callback didn't return anything. It returned none. So when you chain things together, you, you can mutate the value as you go through. If you return none, it ends up being none. So this should be none. Yep, none. So you can chain them together. All right. Uh huh. How do I get back into the slideshow? Does anyone know how to use play, this? Play. Where's on the menu? Play. <gasps> Yay! Play. All right. I, I actually used Keynote for the first time for this. Uh, so th this is the previous example, and this is how to do it asynchronously. So what we do is is we call get page instead. We get our d deferred object. We add a callback, and we've actually just implemented uh, a method right there which you know prints the, the data. So this is those four lines moved up a bit and put in a callback. It's a bit messy. Um, so just a reminder, uh, this is a this is a closure. So self is actually that self. It's not passed through to got data. Line is that line. Um, start is that start. Um, has, everyone's used closures like this before, maybe? Who hasn't? Who's never seen this before? Wow, okay. Um, you can, the, a function definition is just an assignment. You can do it in any scope. Um, and, and it carries, carries through the locals of, of its parent. The only, the only issue is that you can't bind a name in the enclosing scope. You can do anything to do with modifying them or accessing them, but you can't rebind them. Um, this is a bit of a tidier way. Um, so actually defining the method on the object itself. Um, and you'll, you'll see, so, so this method is defining the object itself, so it has a self and that's implicit. Um, that's, that's the result of the deferred that's fired. And you see these two parameters here, URL and start time. Um, when you add a callback, you can add more arguments. It's like a star args. Um, when you add more arguments, they're passed through. And so this is how you can uh, transfer state between um, but between the call, the call site and, and the callback without using closures. Uh, go for it. Well, this, uh, this is proxy2. This is uh, um, the same example, uh, but using get page. You run this now. Uh, proxy2 from the, from the table. Does the line receipt still have a little limiter at the end? Lawrence has just pointed something out. There's a bug here. Uh, we, we've got line dot starts with there, because uh, line is the line we receive, and then we go get page in the line. We're actually passing through the line delimiter there. We should strip it off. Um. I remember this magically working, so uh, I think get page will just take it and run with it. But it probably URL encodes it. Yeah, that's fancy. Also a little silly. <laughs> All right. So basically, to repeat for the people who didn't hear me the first time, um, when you uh, so when line received gets called, the line still has the delimiter at the end of the line. It's not stripped off. So the URL isn't like HTTP um, slash slash Google com. It's HTTP uh, slash slash Google com slash r slash n. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to type this out. It's on the, on the key. Now, um, this is another way of doing it. Uh, 
Now, I've got some bad indentation there. I'm a bad person. Um, sorry, that print should not be indented. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so um, this is this is a a thing to make this easy to write. So it's called uh, inline callbacks. It's a decorator, and it does and it turns whatever method it is into a into a deferred. Um, and because of that, it actually stuffs up line received. So so we call the get page method from from line received. Um, so what? What this does is this turn. Th this is a decorator which um, goes and calls this method, and and returns a deferred. And this is a generator. Is here uses a yield. What this does is it, it. If you yield a deferred, this will this generator will not continue exiting until that deferred has fired. It that essentially adds a callback of uh, of calling uh, generator dot send. So, in this particular case. Uh, you can write this function as if it were uh, like this. So you see that URL lib URL open. That becomes uh, this line here. Uh, page equals yield get page. And so this is asynchronously returning control to the event loop and, uh, and then returning control back here. Now this is a nice neat way of avoiding messy callbacks. Um, Callbacks are sometimes quite hard to read. The, um, generally, I use this technique when uh, you've got a pipeline of things to do. Um, whereas I, I use deferreds explicitly when I'm writing, say, a server which uh, w which attaches a few callbacks before returning a value. Um, uh, when I'm uh, especially like when you're writing uh, one-off scripts to do something on a server somewhere, then what you really want to express is do something, then do something else, then do something else, which is inherently synchronous. But because you're already uh, using Twisted, so you probably want to reuse your protocol. You want to reuse all of your tools. So this is uh, this makes it really easy to express synchronous things because you're expressing them synchronously. Um, it makes it really hard to express asynchronous things. So, um, depending on what you want, the tool is there to make it look easy. So, this is uh, proxy3.py if you want to run it. Um, there, one of one of the problems here is that because it's doing fancy things with uh, with generators and uh, uh, generator send and mucking around with the event loop and wrapping everything, tracebacks look awful. So, uh, so be prepared for if you're using these to have uh, tracebacks that don't seem to make any sense, uh, because you're you're in the bowels of of, some, of another process for getting this running. Um, this is an example of using the timing client, and you can see that the the cost is now the cost of the slowest page, uh, Amazon.com. In this particular example, being the slowest. Um, this is clearly, um, Erastus was the person who wrote these slides originally. Uh, clearly, he was very close to his own server and further away from Apple and Google because of the latency. Um, and you see, you know, the sum of the requests was four seconds and the threaded client did 1.5 because they're doing asynchronously multiple requests at the same time. So, in summary, uh, callbacks must be cooperative. You return control back to the loop and, lo and the loop will call your code when the network is ready. Uh, avoid calling blocking functions. Now there is a corollary to this. If you're if you want to do database stuff, and your database is very fast, like you got an SQLite, you're doing index queries, or you got MySQL on a local server, and it's very very fast, and you don't really care so much, it's not so bad. Uh, but you just have to be aware that um, you, you have to balance out the number of clients you have versus the latency of your database queries. Uh, but if you're definitely doing things that could even time out. You always want to make sure you're doing them asynchronously or in a thread. Um, so exercise 2A, um, take proxy 2 or proxy 3, whichever one you, you're uh, mo most confident with using, and implement a caching proxy server, which will not request the same website twice. Uh, go run it now. Uh, if it's the same URL, then return the cache data. So store each response uh, and and return them. Uh, a dictionary for for save the response data in a dictionary and then just return it. This is the last exercise before the coffee break. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, there's the person behind you has a USB key. Did you saw that USB key? No, oh, no, where's the key? Anyone got one? No, this one.
Oh yeah, uh, or, or files.ep is the uh, is the website, and you can navigate through the tutorials. And if you're feeling really advanced, um, and, and you, you do that quickly, um, making it so you don't request the same web, web page twice if you've got a query in flight. That's actually a really nasty one, especially if, if you've not used deferred before. Perhaps for next year we should uh, actually get you to give them a test suite. Actually, yeah. two a make test two a pass. Yeah. So the suggestion was we should have unit tests that you can just run, it, run against this. Uh, unit testing Twisted is quite easy. You don't actually set up any network connections. You just create an instance of the protocol and call a me call, uh, connection made and data received and see what happens. Um, Do you have another USB key? Uh, have another USB key? Um, let me just make a new one because I don't know where the other ones are. Within the Twisted community, like testing is taken extremely seriously. If you find some random TX project, there is a good chance that it's going to have like literally 100% branch coverage. Um, it and to Twisted itself, like for example, does not accept new code unless it is completely unit tested. Um, we don't take bug fixes unless there's a unit test to prove that there was ever a bug. Uh, sometimes this makes it really annoying. Like you know, there's weird SSSL edge cases that just don't make sense and are impossible to unit test. But it, overall, I'd say it makes the code quality a lot better. My computer has just re refused to believe that USB keys exist. Um. Um, That's why I put a zip file on there as well. But I can't see the zip file. The, 
zip file should be on the website. There's two things next to each other. One's a zip file, one's... <sighs> if anyone wants any help, flag me down. Sorry, he's fiddling with his laptop. So one of those is a zip file. No, no, no. That's the no. Ignore that one. It's the tr twisted training ones. Twist that Europython. Yeah. The first one's a zip. The second one's a Tarji zip, Tarji zip two. That one. So the the, the other one is just a requirements file, a pip requirements file. Oh. It's just that if I upload te text files, it uh it mucks up quite badly. The requirements file isn't required, but it. Um, but I've got a demonstration of um, how you can do. Did anyone go to the tornado talk the other day? Oh, okay. There was a talk on tornado, which is another asynchronous uh, networking framework, um, which integrates with Twisted quite neatly. So I just sort of demonstration in um, bigdemo.py of using tornado and Twisted and Curatwine, which is a greenlets thing. As well as inline callbacks. Uh, no, I, 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 no, I didn't do cy no cyclones. Um, not the same. Cyclone is a reimplementation of tornado. Yeah, um, but the the, the um, event loop that is implemented that is implemented by tornado can be used as a twisted reactor, and they cooperate. Yeah, uh, twisted. You know, tornado dot platforms. Or platform dot twisted, import reactor. Mm -hmm. If I ever do this again, unit tests. We didn't explain what a primed, primed deferred. I know what defer succeed does, but I can't tell from that explanation. Um, yeah, sorry. Maybe I should mention that. Um, uh, a deferred. Um, there are two. Uh, we didn't actually demonstrate that. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll quickly demonstrate that with um, with the with the console. You get a REPL going. I'll explain yeah. what's going on. So basically, uh, 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 as we said before, deferred is something that um, is something that you get now that represents some data that will happen in the future, right? But sometimes you get things. You have things already. For example, in the case of your uh, of your caching proxy, um, let's say you've already made that request. You already have the response somewhere in a dictionary, right? Um, so you still want to return a deferred because your API is deferreds, but you want to return a deferred that has the data already right now. So for that, you have def uh, defer dot, so defer the module uh, defer dot succeed, which basically creates a deferred, fires it immediately, and just returns you to the, uh, returns a deferred. It's only like three lines, but it it's something that's common enough that you want to make it one line. Uh, similarly, there's defer dot fail, which is the same thing except for errors instead of successes. So that's a little example of creating a deferred, you know, a normal one, and it, calling callback is a way of firing it. So you create it, then f then call it. Um, you can only call callback once, um, or you can just call defer dot succeed, um, and that's the same as creating one, then immediately calling the callback function. Uh, defer dot fail is 
the same as creating one and immediately calling the urbac function. Um, I'm just quickly adding a callback and adding an urbac there to demonstrate because that's my, my foo from earlier which prints. Um, I have, I have, whenever I do examples, I always use foo in them. It's very bad of me. Especially when I muck it up by actually using foo in my string and foo in my function and then it different prints foo and it's very foo. Oh, from future import print function. This is awesome. Uh, if you're writing code, does this even work? Sure, why not? Well, because you can't do future import. Oh, um, does this? It does work. That's amazing. I thought you had to do future imports at the beginning of your module. Uh, if you're writing, uh, like, if you're writing a module, yes. In a REPL, no. Ah. Lawrence has just taught me something new. So, um, so one problem with print, of course, is that it's not a function, and so you can't add it as a callback. Turns out, if you do from future import print function, you can just add it as a callback. So you, ha you have a, a nice callback which prints stuff out. That has been my biggest annoyance, and now it is no longer. Thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> All right, so, so in this case, um, I'm just going to show that um, defer.succeed. Um, my page I downloaded earlier dot add callback print yay and it prints out my page I downloaded earlier so the idea is that if um, it's if, if you've got it in your cache then you call then you return it to first succeed otherwise you um, uh, you don't have to um, how much time do we have left Okay, so it's time for the coffee break. I'm going to leave the answers up. Do, do you want me to leave an answer up um, over the coffee break? All right, I'll do that. That's a answer, um, which uh, is a is not using inline callbacks, but using um, straight up deferreds. All right. Well, we'll be back here at what time? All right. I, I will be back here and I'm going to uh, start again at 11.15. So I'll see you in, in about half an hour. Yeah. I'll probably be back here a little bit sooner if anyone wants, like, more, uh, wants to ask more in-depth questions. Um, so this solution does not do the fancy version where uh, if there's a request in flight that hasn't been answered yet, use that one and don't make double requests. This is the simpler version.